after a short talk, it's going to be difficult to say something different or new uh, if we look at uh, what IPv2 can give to the Transmart trans community. So since I knew that in advance, I wanted to do my presentation just showing a slightly different way of using IPv2. In particular, I will make reference to the talk of this morning of Zach, who mentioned that this kind of technology can be used at the point of care to support decisions. So, um, it's clear that data integration is important, it's part of the game of precision medicine, and it's, it's exactly what we are doing, basically. So, uh, it's interesting to see that uh, even in the most recent papers uh, published, there are these two aspects. So, the idea that it's care that informs research, and that's what we are doing, or we did with I2B2 and Transmart in order to be able to uh, improve uh, our research ability, but it's also important that we, if we take a look on the other side, that is research informs care, or uh, to think about if we can use the data that are collected uh, with the purpose of uh, supporting researchers also at the point of care. So, uh, just to say a few words about uh, I2B2 in Pavia. Uh, well, it's a long story because uh, I signed an agreement uh, to be part of the AUG of, uh, of I2B2 in 2009 and uh, uh, I kept on going uh, in uh, using I2B2 uh, in many different occasions. Uh, also because Pavia is, uh, well, Pavia is a small town close to Milan, but it has one peculiarity, that is, it has three research hospitals uh, in uh, one square mile. And this is uh, unique in Italy, in a way. Uh, and in the middle, there's the, my faculty of engineering. So it's a good opportunity to work together and to do real things in the hospital. So uh, we have uh, I2B2 installation, and we support clinical research in oncology, cardiology, hematology. We have implemented different uh, cells and plugins. The most recent ones are related to analytic cell, and one cell that we just published on managing NGS data. We have some open source software that can be used to feed the I2B2 Hive, uh, the I2B2 CRC, um, using uh, for the temporal data analysis, uh, temporal structures. And recently, we have used uh, this architecture to support decisions, and that's what I'm going to talk about. Just, as, uh, uh, just to let you know that what I'm, I'm telling you is true, just take a look at the literature uh, and see that we have done the work to deal in particular with next generation sequencing using a different kind of model uh, for managing the, the, this data, in this case, in a NoSQL uh, databases uh, to store uh, um, genetic annotations, uh, in particular variants, and uh, we have implemented the as a, a couple set plus plugin into the I2B2 system, that, uh, in a system that we have called the TIC-Q. But this would be, uh, let's say, a, uh, a, another way to, let's say, to share knowledge, to share our plugins, to share our add-ons with the Transmart community. But let me go back to the main focus of my talk of today, it is to uh, see if we can use the I2B2 Structure to support clinical care. And uh, this is something that is advocated also uh, by medical journals like this Nature Review paper. It is within the topic uh, that is the theme of precision medicine and decision support. Is this kind of architecture useful to support decisions? So, uh, what kind of decisions? So, as, as everybody knows here in the room, uh, I mean, the decision support system can be an evidence-based decision support system that is uh, trying to translate evidence-based recommendation into rules or uh, knowledge on alerts that we put into the EHR. But <clears throat> what's clear that it's uh, increasingly important that we can, we can suggest that we can support decisions just by integrating data, the right data at the point of care. And of course, providing this uh, integration with proper data analytics and visualization analytics. So, uh, what we did uh, in one EU project was exactly to try to work along this line, integrating at the point of care uh, data that are not only collected in the EHR, 
but are also collected in other data sources. And uh, uh, to this end, uh, we have worked uh, for improving, uh, uh, in particular, the, the management of complications of diabetes patients through a project that was funded by the European Commission called Mosaic. Mosaic, well, it's a very ambitious project that just ended and wanted to deliver new analytics for the prediction of the onset of diabetes and for better stratification of the complication of the patient. And in Pavia, we have in particular work on this uh, uh, second topic. So, um, in this case, what we did was to build a system that was aimed to be uh, given to the NPR giver, able to integrate the clinical data coming from the VHR with the administrative data. We call administrative data what we call sometimes billing data. Uh, it's all, all the data that are collected by the National Health Care Service uh, uh, about what's happening to these patients. So this is a very uh, interesting source of information because even if we don't have a clinical value, for example, for a certain exam, we know that a patient that had a certain exam or had a certain access, let's say, to a lab. Um, so it gives a sort of continuity of care view, in particular in the monitoring of these diabetic patients. Then we did some work also trying to integrate the environmental data, such as satellite data or pollution data, but I'm not going to talk about these aspects in particular. So um, we have we have three centers who worked uh, uh, together with us. There's a Pavia group here. Then uh, the, the hospital La Fe in Valencia, they focused on hospital in Athens. And the idea was just to rely on the I2B2 data warehouse to collect the heterogeneous set of data. So I2B2 is extremely uh, useful to also to work as a sort of backend. And uh, during this conference, I've learned that this uh, idea is the idea of the sidecar approach. So now I've learned a new way of presenting uh, what we are doing uh, and, and, uh, and using this kind of infrastructure. To do that. So we carried on our work, in particular in Pavia, on uh, around uh, 1,000 patients. Uh, plus, for doing some tests, we have also included in the EMR other uh, 1,000 patients that the data collected retrospectively for more than 10 years. And these data are coupled with this data coming from the local healthcare agency that's in particular interesting in our case. So, um, of course, we relied on a common data model to do that. And uh, what we did was to build a dashboard. So, uh, basically, the software layer, the presentation layer of the entire architecture uh, was built on top of that. Uh, probably we could have used the smart apps, but we didn't. So, we had uh, performed our own uh, implementation of the, uh, of the user interface, relying on uh, uh, standardized queries made on the I2B2 data warehouse. So, uh, the common data model, of course, is based on an ontology. These ontologies were presented in the I2B2 that was extremely useful for design. And some of the ontologies based on standard ontologies like ICD9 that we are still using in Italy, ICD9. So that's the reality, uh, instead of XCD10, but then we have used the uh, other, uh, let's say, in-house or standard uh, part of terminologies and ontologies. Then we have designed this architecture that basically relies on the I2B2 data warehouse, but it performs a number of, uh, uh, let's say, analytical uh, layers, analytical uh, activities uh, on the data. So some of the data are pre-processed uh, well, when they are uploaded into I2B2. Uh, an example is represented by this temporal abstraction. What's a temporal abstraction? Uh, it's basically a representation of an episode that has a clinical importance that has a duration. So it has a start time and an end time. Uh, it could be a, a high fever, for example, for, uh, uh, one, uh, for one week, something like that. And uh, we have also run a, a, what we have called the data mining model that is, on the contrary, is run on the fly when queries are performed. This data mining model performs uh, what we have called uh, uh, pattern uh, mining on the data. 
So it basically is able to extract the most frequent uh, sequences of events that occur to the patients over time. And the frequent, we have to do that uh, runtime because the frequency is computed on the subpopulation that is selected by the user. And uh, so it's frequent with respect to the subgroup of, uh, of patients that are, uh, that are taken into consideration. And we'll show you an example later. So uh, within the entire system, what we did was to include some models to assess individual risk of developing uh, uh, microvascular and cardiovascular complications. Some of those are risk scores that are computed on the patient's data. Some of them on the fly, some others are pre-computed when we populate the data warehouse database. Then, uh, as I told you, we have uh, this uh, module that performs careful mining. Uh, a description of the level of complexity. And something that was very useful was this analysis of drug purchases. So one thing that is collected by the healthcare uh, service is uh, the purchases of drugs of the patients. So since the, the drugs uh, for the diabetic patients are partially uh, paid by the national care service, uh, this means that every time the patient buys the drug with the uh, prescription, this is uh, reported in the system, so we know what's the, the pattern of, of purchase behavior of these patients. So, uh, of course, uh, let's say that we have a view of the patients uh, that is able to go back in the past looking at administrative data, and after the first visit of the, at the hospital, we can also have clinical data that are matched. So we have a sort of temporal view that seems uh, quite interesting in this case. So in our uh, application, our dashboard has two different components. One that is something that one would expect that is simply to uh, show the data to the uh, healthcare managers or to the head of the department, trying to understand what's going on to the entire set of patients that, that they are dealing with. And another part is exactly the decision support system, with the idea to provide summaries and uh, analytics or pre-computed analytics of the patient's data at the point of care in order to improve the quality of interaction providing a more uh, complete view of what's going on to the patients. So in terms of the mosaic dashboard, uh, what, it, what it was possible to show, you know, is something like that, profiles of the center. So something that they discover, for example, that is uh, uh, during the study, is that typically the patients that are referred to the hospital are uh, they do have or they do develop uh, within one between one year after the first visit uh, cardiovascular problems. So there's a major reason why they are referred to the to the hospital by the GPs because the GPs as a suspect that there's a problem uh, and then this is diagnosed at the hospital. Um, and then this, of course, this allows to, uh, you know, profile better the population. Then, using the dashboard, it is possible to, to take a look at different views of the data, including these uh, uh, time, uh, timelines that are uh, reporting the famous uh, care flows that I was mentioning to you in terms of patient clinical pathways, uh, like you see the hospital or in hospital or uh, other, other uh, more I high level abstractions that takes into account the general situation in terms of complexity of care that is delivered to the specific patients or specific patients' groups. And uh, moving to the uh, single patient analysis, what was possible was to subdivide the screen into three uh, different, uh, let's say, we have three different screens, different uh, uh, views of the patient data that reports the most interesting data through a simple uh, metaphors. Well, of course, we may have time series, but uh, I'll go back later here. Uh, we have the metaphors based on, on uh, uh, traffic lights uh, that are related to the different uh, uh, areas of monitoring that are of interest. And here, you can see the uh, the visualization of the drug purchase patterns of the patients um, in terms that is uh, considering the different types of drugs. And uh, what is particularly interesting is that 
the patient is compared with the patient, the other patients of the same group. Uh, so um, it is possible to understand if the patient over uh, buys the drugs or under buys the drugs compared to the same uh, uh, to the same population. It is, it is possible to it is possible to do it dynamically in a way. If I want to see what's going on at the patient at a certain age and certain sex, I can perform this kind of comparison. No? So we, we believe that this kind of uh, way of using IPDP is goes exactly in the direction of also being more precise in a way. Uh, so I just have a very quick video to let you see that the, it's, a, it's a real story what we did. Uh, I mean, the, the visit is very, is very simple. And uh, what is peculiar is that the data are entered by the nurse before the visit. And during the visit, the physician only talks with the patient, just looking at the traffic lights and uh, at the different uh, visual analytics that we have provided. So here uh, she just says that the HbA1c is fine, but the monitoring uh, not so, because for one year the patient didn't, go, uh, didn't show up, actually, uh, at the regular visits. And uh, then, of course, uh, you know, the patient, uh, and this is actually, the, this is not a real patient, but it's a uh, simulate what uh, really happened uh, during the visit that I also uh, uh, have seen. So <clears throat> there's, there are self-reports about what the patient is doing that is uh, transforming the traffic lights related to the diet, for example. And uh, uh, of course here uh, the physician gets nervous because the patient doesn't follow the diet. And uh, uh, then the, the other part of the story is uh, uh, that within these analytics, uh, also the risk, risk calculators are computed. So there's uh, this uh, application of machine learning models uh, that is able to show here, for example, the risk of uh, nephropathy that's, that is computed to the patient, for the patient. And uh, let me go further, just to want to show you that uh, uh, using the same system, is uh, uh, it's then possible to take a look at the, as I showed you before, at the uh, at the pur purchase pattern of that specific patient. So that's that's the story. And as you can see, it's just looking at the data basically, and looking at the data that are typically are not available in the EHR in an integrated manner. So just a few words, and then I will finish my presentation. Also because I have to catch a train, unfortunately. And uh, um, so we did a sort of test of the system, uh, which is still running, but well, we have, I have the, some data of the first four months of the use of the system. So we have a small group of, uh, of clinicians, nine clinicians who use the system, and uh, we have tested the system uh, on uh, uh, around 350 patients, but we have checked the, the, the uh, visit behavior uh, before and after the use of the mosaic system using the same uh, um, number of patients. And uh, well, we have checked the number of things. Uh, uh, what are the most interesting uh, aspects uh, are that the visit duration is slower uh, than what happened before the mosaic system. But the number of screening exams that were prescribed is higher. I don't know if the, uh, our uh, national care service is happy about that. But um, this, uh, in our view, at least after the interview, it seemed that it was the system was useful to focus on tension, basically, uh, more quickly on, uh, uh, on a specific problem. So, and uh, actually, there were uh, more intervention of physical activity simply because uh, they are also, even if it's self-reported data, uh, those data are typically neglected during the day-by-day -day visits, while with traffic lights it was easy to uh, show them. Uh, looking at the usability score, the results were was good, especially for the clinical module, while the VI module was less, a little bit more uh, complex. So uh, that's basically the end. What I want to say is that, okay, using our kind of tools and things, uh, like I2B2 and uh, of course uh, also uh, I guess Transmart uh, uh, as far as I know it, it's clear that we can have impact also on the other side as, as, as on the other part of the game, you know, as uh, exactly was mentioned today. 
And that is relatively easy to do that, and it's an instrument that allows to put together EHR with other data sources in order to make available at the point of care the right, the right data at the right time. And in a way, we have all the technology to do that. So uh, my point is that since uh, in through the Transmart community you have uh, a clear expertise in the use in working on molecular information and looking at this kind of information will be more and more important at the point of care when uh, complex decisions will have to be taken on specific kind of diseases, it would be important to think about what kind of how to present the, the data that we have also the molecular space, how to uh, leverage on the, on the idea that we can put our patient into, uh, let's say, a space of other patients that might have similar problems or have been already treated uh, in, in certain ways, also, let's say, considering all the data that we have. And that's, that's it. Thank you. amazing talk. Very <laughs> impressive. Please. This might not relate to the topic, but, but I would be envious of uh, treating patients with such a physical need um, versus looking at these kind of things that we know of. <laughs> so are there ways that this could be incorporated with other EHR systems? And how do you yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. So um, the idea is that the model, let's say the IGV2 mosaic module was implemented in principle as a, uh, let's say, an add-on to any uh, system. Let me go back very quickly to one slide that I just skipped. Here there should be, there is a sort of general architecture of uh, what was designed by our software uh, designer, let's say. So the idea is that basically here we have a population part that puts the data into the central data warehouse. And uh, once you have the data that are that adhere to the, to, the, to the data model, so the ontology of ITP2, then you can, you know, sort of put all, all the other parts of the system into the, uh, into the into the game here the the, cons, the general concept was that in principle one would have also distributed system where we may might have more than one instance of i2v2 and uh, so that for some statistics for example like for example the comparison with the drugs you may have a comparison with a larger population than just those who are treated by the hospital so that's the concept so in principle that this all the system was designed to be uh, pluggable to existing solutions. Yes. No, uh, not yet. Uh, is, uh, BQ is now uh, um, is now available uh, as a plugin of uh, I2B2 and the cell. Uh, you can, there's a publication in DMC Bioinformatics with references where you can get it. We didn't test it here in the mosaic uh, problem because we didn't have molecular data here. So, uh, and actually, I would say the truth that BQ is a, a part, is a thought for researchers and not for the, 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 point, the point of care. I can't it. And okay. I would have one question, and how yes. would mosaic be could be integrated with smart applications. So, is this something you started to look at, or is it impossible? Uh, no, okay. Um, I think that you know, since it's based on I2P2, the idea is that one could uh, start from the data structure and uh, all the, the things that have been pre-filled by I2P2 um, in I2P2, and then just you know plug in the, trans the, the smart interfaces, uh, so something need to be written, but it's in principle. Great. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
I have it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. No, 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 no. Sean, where's my glasses? He's no, 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 no. You have to catch him. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll introduce myself for the sake of time. Brian, you can't see him. He's over there. <laughs> Half might be an overestimate. <laughs> Where are the air bars? I know we're running behind, so I think I'll introduce myself. Oh, Paul, do you want me to just 